See, the problem with budgeting is all of the financial gurus out there, all of the blogs just give you general advice, get you all pumped up to go budget, and then you get going and you have no idea where to start. Let's talk about the big ticket items that can financially ruin you if you don't know how much to spend and how much to budget on them. Emergency funds, retirement savings, this is a class about specifics. We are not going to motivate you. I am not going to inspire you. I'm going to educate you on exactly what you need to do with your budget, with these big ticket items and the big portions of your budget so that you and your family never stress about budgeting your money again. If you sign up before June 8th, then we're giving you lifetime access to Nest Egg, our personal financial portal where you can get your dough straight Everything in your financial life, including your budget, can be seen on this portal. And best of all, we do not sell your information like Mint or some of the other apps. It is 100% yours, customizable to you. Again, if you wanna be motivated, you wanna be inspired, then this is not the class for you. If you want details and specifics about what to do the second you finish with this class, well then I hope to see you there. All right, what's good everybody? We are uh, gonna talk today about four tips to get your dough straight, right? We gotta get this straight. I mean, we're kind of following up on some of the things uh, that we're gonna talk about leading up to our class that we're doing. Uh, we've got a class coming up on June 9th. Hope you'll join us for that. Uh, we're gonna cover all the specifics, all of the details about how to get your dough straight when it comes to your budget. We're gonna focus on the things that people just don't teach you how much you should spend on a car, how much you should spend on a house, how much you should be saving for in your emergency fund specifically, and then how you should adjust as you hit certain goals along the way. And of course, we're gonna cover retirement as well. But look, when it comes to how much you should spend on a car, if you're gonna finance it, people just don't talk about that. There's no actual number. We have no like guidelines. The only thing we're ever told about in life as far as a guideline is how much we should tithe. Otherwise, you're, you're given a lot of randomness where people just don't know. But look, today I want to give you four tips to help you sort of get your dough straight. And it really comes from learning from my customers, learning from what I see them do in Nest Egg. Nest Egg is a product that we give to all of our customers um, uh, when they join us here. It's like Mint, right? It's a personal finance portal, but it allows us to kind of take a deeper look if you want some help. So uh, let's get started. This is, this is going to be really straightforward, but I want to give you some good tips here. So tip number one of the four tips is you got to set a goal. And I know this sounds stupid, right? I know like oh, set a goal. Of course you set a goal, right? We all know you got to set a goal. But the idea behind this is what is it? What specifically is it? And when you have that goal, start telling people. Start telling people exactly what it is you want to do. So, you know, uh, what was his name? I can't think of his name. Bill Gates. Bill Gates did a great, uh, it was a quote in one of his books where he said, uh, people tend to overestimate what they can do in one year, but they always underestimate what they can do in 10 years, okay? Now, I like that. I like the idea of overestimating what you can do in a year because it means you're going to try hard. It means you're going to push for it. You're going to make it happen. So if this comes down to investing, I mean, I, I tend to land on the investing side. I have a lot of clients that say, look, my goal for the year is just to max out my IRA. Be the first time I've ever done it. Would be the first time I've ever got all that money in and at work. And I would love to do that. So that's their goal. Now, great. That is a starting point. If your goal is to pay off some debt, I don't know. Is it going to take you a year? Is it going to take you five, 10, whatever? But we got to start with that goal. And I think it's more important that you tell people, you know, what your goal is. And we did, we just did a video on that, actually. I'm going to do... I'm going to do this real quick. Number one, uh, goal, right? And more importantly, tell people about your goal. So that's the first thing you got to do. Um, write it down, put it up on something, put it up on a blackboard, right? Write it on your mirror. After you get out of the shower, put it in the sort of steam. If you have a, a small enough bathroom, put the, 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 what you want in steam on there. And so that way, every time you get out of the shower, you'll see it, right? You'll know exactly what your goal is. Kind of a silly one, but you could do that. Number two. That's my horrible handwriting, and I'm going to change this mic out, actually. We're going to use, uh, go back to the sort of wired mic. But uh, baby steps, right? 
What are you doing? When it comes to your goal, you set the goal, you told your friends, you told your family, everybody that you're trying to achieve this goal, you told them what you're doing. Now it's time to take baby steps. Now, again, I land on the investing side. So a lot of our customers, their goal might be to max out their IRA, but they're going to do it $25 at a time. And that might mean putting in a little bit of money and then $25 a week or a little bit of money and $50 a week or a month or however they're going to do it. But those are the baby steps, okay? If your goal is to get somewhere within a year, what are you doing to get there? And for some of you, that might mean skipping out on certain things in your personal life so that you have enough money to put into your Roth IRA or invest to save for, you know, a house or whatever it is that you're doing. So inch into what you're doing. Take those baby steps, right? Don't do the lump sum, what do they call it? The diet sort of approach where, you know, you'd say, I'm going to diet and you like throw everything out of the refrigerator. You leave yourself with some carrots and a little bit of hummus and you go, that's it. You know, I'm going to, uh, I'm going to lose all this weight. That doesn't work. You end up with a bag of Cheetos on the couch, just like crying to yourself that you've eaten too much. So be very, very careful there. Inch into what you're doing. If you're using nest egg, common problem that I see a lot of our customers, or if you happen to be using nest egg, uh, you tend to want to get excited and go too far too fast. Inch into your goal. Let Nest Egg or whatever personal finance portal you're using, let it tell you that you're hitting your goal. Let it show you you're making the right decisions. Number three, when you make those right decisions and you start getting towards your goal, reward yourself. So three is a reward. Now look, I'm gonna, I kind of touched on this in the last video. I'm going to get a little, you know, I'm going to go back on it for you guys. When you're trying to get towards a goal or you're trying to budget and you have a spouse or you have somebody that's going along with you, a boyfriend, girlfriend, whatever it may be, your wife, I don't know, your husband, it's important that one of you is going to take on the budget. The other person is going to kind of go along for the ride. It's typical. Very rarely do two people go together towards a budget and, and, and share the same mindset. Look at Washington, for God's sakes. Not everybody's heading in the right direction. But it's important to get little rewards along the way. And so you even see that in politics where, you know, one side will get a little bit and then they'll give on something else and then they'll get a little bit and then they'll give on something else. Where I want to go with this is to give you a specific. If you are the primary budget monitoring person, you're the one taking care of this, then go ahead and budget something in for your spouse. You do the extra work and say, you know what? This is our budget. Uh, my spouse agreed to this budget, but they don't know about this little $25 uh, night out that we're going to have, or they don't know about uh, one night a month, we're going to go and have a nice dinner. We're going to make a, a date of it. It's going to be really nice. Surprise them with that so that when you do that and you go, hey, we're going out this Saturday, you got a special night planned and they go, wait a minute, does that fit into our budget? You go, of course it does, right? I'm doing right for us. I'm helping us progress. And because we're doing that, I have fit this into our budget. That will really shock them because then, well, as most of you probably do, you're making a budget stringent. You're making your goal stringent, right? If you're trying to save for retirement, save for some investment, a house, whatever it may be, you're probably excited about it and you want to go towards that goal as aggressively as possible. And a lot of times your spouse does not feel the same way. So always put a little something in there for them as well. Don't forget them because you know they're making a little sacrifice as well. Uh, with us at Jazz Wealth, I'm actually trying to think of a rewards program. How cool would that be if you were like the first advisor? First of all, there's so many things we're the first at doing, but what, how cool would it be if we were the first to actually have a rewards program? Meaning if you got to certain goals, we rewarded you for that. I think that'd be cool. The logistics of it and the legality of it is another story. But again, we got a great compliance team now on our side that helped us publish our performance on the website. So maybe we can get something done. We're talking about it. We'll see. So number three, make sure you have uh, rewards along the way. That goes without saying, if you're doing a diet, whether you're doing budgeting, whatever it is you're doing, have rewards. And number four, um, I'm not going to write it on the thing there. We ran out of space. Uh, number four, have someone hold you accountable for that goal. And this goes back to everything that is the opposite of what we're taught. We are taught not to talk about how much money we make to our other employees that we work with or other people, coworkers that we work with. You know, there's nothing illegal about that. You could flat out walk over to your other 
coworker and say, I make $57,000 a year. How much money do you make? And you can't get in any trouble for that. Most people don't know that that's the actual rule there. And that's not state by state. That is the law. You're allowed to openly talk about it, but we're taught not to talk about it. And then that bleeds over into our personal life. We don't talk to our spouse about how much we spent on stuff. We don't share with our kids or our family how much things cost. We don't even know how much mom and dad make. We don't know what's in their retirement account. I get so many calls. Oh, dad passed away. Mom's clueless about what's in the retirement account. Well, that's a shame. I don't know what to tell you, right? We, we have to do all these extra steps now. So talk about it, right? Have someone that you can talk to, and it can't be your spouse, by the way, because if you're going to have someone hold you accountable, your spouse is like the worst person to do that. The reason why is you ever been on a diet with your spouse and you said, Hey, we're going to go jogging. We're going to go to the gym. This is going to be great. We're going to, Oh, totally. We're going to lose all this weight, get in shape. And then your spouse comes home and, and they're like, I had a long day. And you go, damn, I had a long day too. Yeah. Let's just, let's just skip it tonight. And you both skip the, the jogging. You don't go out, you don't work out. So if it comes to, down to money or a goal, your spouse will be the same way. If you say, Oh, I'm, I just, I really want Chipotle. Let's just go out. Let's just forget this one time. Yeah, they want Chipotle too. Who doesn't want Chipotle? It's awesome. <laughs> so that is probably the worst. You know who the best person to use for holding you accountable is? If you're a parent, tell your kids. I promise you, tell your kids that you're saving for a car. You tell your kids that you're budgeting because you want to save for retirement. You're trying to get X number of dollars in your retirement. Your kids love to rub it in your face when you do something wrong. And so they will ask, they will constantly ask. And you don't want to lie to your kids. If you tell, if you don't save for retirement, you don't save for the house or the vacation you promised them. And they ask you how things are going. You don't want to lie to your kid. So tell your kids how much money you're putting away, how much money you're making, what's your goal, what's your budget. It's a great way for them to have fun when you say, every Friday, we're going to drive down to the bank. I'm going to put $100 in the bank and I'm going to put it in this one account. Well, when Friday comes along, if you're not driving to the bank, that kid's going to go, what? why aren't we going to the bank? Where's the money? And all of a sudden, they're going to rag on you. They're going to pick on you. It's incredible. So make sure you have someone hold you accountable. That's it. Don't want to make this one too long for you. Uh, what else do I have? I got nothing else for you. I uh, appreciate you watching. We will talk to you soon.